Hi everyone, my name is Michael and I'm from MyBlocks and MyCapital. So two years ago, I invested in a real estate PE fund. While the return was good, I later came across an even better opportunity. So I wanted to exit from my previous one and get some cash back, but I couldn't. I was locked in in that fund for at least another five, six years. So illiquidity has always been the expected when you invest in things like real estate or startups or fine art or any of the $250 trillion of illiquid assets out there. Now, if you wanna raise money with these assets, is there a way that you can offer better liquidity for your investors? Traditionally, there are two ways to raise capital. One is through PE, which is still illiquid, or IPO, which is expensive to do. So that's why we're here, to offer a new innovative option, one that is cheaper and more liquid. And we're calling this digitized funds. The key here is very few can offer this right now, and we can, because we operate Hong Kong's first digital asset fund platform with an SFC license, and we have blockchain technology. So how does this work? Essentially, we're creating a fund to hold the asset, say real estate, and then we digitize the shares of the fund into blockchain tokens. These are then offered to investors worldwide and put on exchanges so people can trade and exit. The beauty of this structure is that it is very familiar and flexible. And we can put everything online, make it very transparent, and you can automate the whole management of it all thanks to blockchain. And the best part is we can easily replicate this across many, many assets. Now we have already released version one of our platform and it works just like an investment marketplace. From KYC to onboarding to making an investment into a digitized fund. You can do all of that online. And we also have a portal to help us manage the administrative process along the way. The whole experience is quite straightforward and the real magic really happens underneath at the blockchain layer. This is quite exciting, right? And we're getting a lot of interest from asset owners already. We have already digitized a Bitcoin quant fund from MyCapital, the first of its kind. We're now digitizing the first real estate asset in Hong Kong, a new office building that's worth north of $200 million. In addition, we have a long pipeline of real estate deals from large PE funds and developers in Asia, like Kai Long and Stan Group, and renewable energy deals with Netflix. So with all these, the business trajectory is very, truly amazing as we project to be profitable soon after a couple more deals are done. Now, all of this cannot be achieved without our team of veterans from across technology, finance, and compliance. And we also have a strong set of advisors from across all key areas, Ethereum technology, legal, accounting, and real estate. There's really no one like us in the market having all these key elements. And in addition, to push towards achieving true liquidity for these assets, we're adding unique features that tie the benefits of digitization with the asset itself. So the ultimate goal is to attract greater demand from investors and hence generating true liquidity. No one else can single-handedly do all of these except for us. So in summary, we're aiming to be the leader in building up an investment platform, targeting the next generation of investors. And we hope that you can join us on this exciting journey. Thank you. Angie, uh, can you kick us off to uh, the questions from the jury from Michael's great presentation? Sure, can you see me? My video is blocked. Hi. Michael, thank Hi. you so much for the presentation. Um, so I have a slightly conflicting relationship with blockchain in, in the sense that it's a term that's been kind of in and out in terms of its popularity. Um, sure. Can you maybe explain a bit more why blockchain specifically? Obviously it's a big buzzword, everybody talks, talks about it, all the digitized currencies, et cetera. But what is the real value that the blockchain brings to this platform versus you building it on another type of backbone? Um, yeah, so blockchain, uh, I think there's a proof of concept, more than a proof of concept with blockchain, where you've seen applications like Bitcoin, Ethereum, 
different types of digital assets have already exploded in the market. And obviously a lot of ups and downs, but at least the proliferation of it is, is continuing. And what the model proves is at least you can transfer things of value over a vast network online. And I think that's the biggest application for us is um, what we're talking about is transacting of things with value. Uh, in this case, will be pegged or um, backed by real assets. But then the actual um, exchange or transaction is still happening uh, online. And blockchain has proven to be able to support that in a very reliable uh, and, uh, and safe fashion. So I think that's the key reason we're doing this. Great. Thank you. Ginny? Thanks so much. Um, it, similar, I think that we've been at the, the verge of this tipping point around uh, you know, tokenization of assets for a bit of time, and it sounds like you're one of the few doing this in the way that you are right now. I'm curious what you see that competitive landscape looking like in a year from now, three years from now, and how you plan to keep your uh, distinction and your competitive advantage over time. Yeah, right now we're seeing um, uh, some players uh, coming in and playing different angles, I guess, uh, or playing different parts of this whole, uh, whole supply chain. Uh, many of the players are more focused on the technology itself. Um, from our perspective, it's, uh, it's more than just technology. The technology is the enabler, but it doesn't get us all the way to uh, realizing the actual tokenization of assets and getting that to the hands of investors. So we're approaching it a little bit differently. We're, um, we're, we're trying to solve all these problems uh, within our company and within our, our, our startup. In the, for the technology startups, they are forced to partner with others uh, to complete the whole deal. So they, they need to find financial partners, they need to find people with licenses, and then you end up this deal, you have a string of five, six partners all trying to work together to complete the transaction of one deal, which ultimately um, has a much higher chance of failure. So in our case, we're trying to solve all these problems within ourselves, and throughout the process, we'll be learning a lot about what are the intricacies, what are the difficulties, and solving those problems ourselves. So I think the uh, this gives us a, a leg up as this, hopefully this uh, uh, dream of tokenizing many, many assets will come. And, uh, and then by that time, I think the uh, vast of expertise we have from across this whole process uh, is, is much more than uh, the other competitors out there. Fantastic, thanks. Jonathan. Yeah, I think like Ginny, we've been looking at this space for some time. And uh, real estate is a very conservative industry, right? So um, I like it that you're regulated, but I think the challenge we faced is that so far, most of the assets that have been marketed using, you know, more alternate methods, put it that way, they've been assets that have been struggling to sell. So yes. um, would you, this $200 million asset that you're looking to, to uh, I guess, to put into your platform, if it was to be sold in a normal manner, would it would it reach the same price? Yeah, so um, I think the ultimately the asset itself has to be a good enough investment. By by just putting a token on top of it, um, does not make it a lot more attractive. Uh, attractive. So I think that's key. Um, mm -hmm. You know, garbage in, garbage out. But um, there are additional elements that we're adding. Um, just for example, you brought the example of us uh, digitizing this, this office building in Hong Kong. Yes, we're tokenizing it, we're um, uh, converting into hopefully a more liquid form. But in addition to that, we want to add features that uses um, the concept of blockchain. For example, uh, you know, a, a unique use case is this uh, office building we're tokenizing has uh, obviously renting offices to, to people. Now, can we tie in the further benefits of, if you're a token investor or token holder, you also get the benefit of renting that same office building, getting an office for a discounted rate or for a certain period of time that's free. So there are these type of marketing elements that tie in with the token. Uh, another thing that uh, we're working on is to tie in, potentially creating yet another token for usage where people, tenants, token holders can have an additional token where they can spend that token within this building, within the ecosystem of this building. And the, 
developer that actually owns this building, they not only have one building, they have a portfolio of other buildings and type, other types of properties all across Hong Kong. And so they can actually uh, use this as a springboard to get token holders to potentially uh, do more business or uh, uh, use more of their other services elsewhere. And so you, you want to create this type of uh, ecosystem that leverages the, the benefits of blockchain. Uh, if you just purely sell it as an asset itself, then, then you really have to make it uh, as, as a very attractive, uh, good return asset, which like you said, right now, there's not a lot of assets out there that's like that. Okay, a couple minutes left, Dan. Two incredibly quick questions. First one is just a clarification, really. Are you sure. tokenizing the building or are you tokenizing a company that owns the building? I'm tokenizing a fund that owns the building. So we're structuring okay. the fund to hold the building. That makes sense. So, so there are lots of different people looking at how they can make uh, real estate more liquid, which makes perfect sense and, and uh, great presentation. It's good to see that. All of the ones that I've come across have the problem of how do you get enough critical mass? Yes. They've got the buyers and sellers on both sides. So however good it is, how do you get to that point of critical mass? Is that a problem and how are you going to address that? Yeah, it's, it's a real problem. And I think um, there are two things that are happening. One is, is not as much within our control is we need more of these ecosystem players. One key player, uh, set of players is exchanges. Ultimately, you need to have marketplaces where people can come in and out. And these exchanges are coming out. The slowness in their uh, uh, you know, establishment is really because of license regulation. Um, in many countries, regulated token exchanges are still but we are expecting over the next six to 12 months, there are some very uh, top tier jurisdictions in, in Asia, in Hong Kong and Singapore uh, and, and various places, more of these exchanges will come out. So I think that's the first thing is you need to have a place for people to trade. Uh, the second problem is even if you have these exchanges and okay, let's say I have a nice asset, I put it on the exchange, will people come and trade? That takes time. And so Part of the work that we're doing and, and also leveraging the financial capabilities we have is we need to do some sort of a, uh, for lack of a better word, a market making type activity and create a momentum for that asset. So um, one example is you can break up that investment opportunity into multiple tranches where you create additional incentives as you go on to second or third tranches as to go. And at the same time, you as the asset owner, you, you, you basically sell off pieces of this asset, initially maybe 10% and then another 20%, for example. And so you get to build the market um, and, and you can command how the market move because you have the major supply of it. And, and, and so we'll work together in, uh, in making that market for these assets. And you really have to do something like this make it a successful case. And once you get a few of these successful cases with nice assets, then really the momentum will, will go. Jorn? Yeah, let me take you back to Hong Kong. It's a great asset and it's real asset. And let's assume there's a fire protection, fire safety issue, and it takes 10 million euro, uh, bucks to fix it. Where do these 10 million come from? Yeah, so essentially we're running this just like a PE fund. So in the PE fund, you have uh, structures in place where um, you, let's say you have $100 million in that PE fund, you probably invest 70% of it into the asset itself or into the operation of the asset. And you do have some um, amount of money for uh, upkeeping, maintenance uh, of the operation for the fund and also maintaining the, the, uh, the asset. You'll be buying insurance, et cetera. So all of this will be run very similarly to how a PE fund is done. And what we're trying to do is different is really on top is how these funds are then distributed and how people can come in and out of that fund. Thanks. Excellent. Well, applause for you, Michael. Excellent presentation. Um, very distinct. Uh, we will appreciate that. <laughs>